And I got a great question from my friend Tanya of Tanya Lorraine Photography. Um, and she is looking to make a PDF freebie for her website, which is an awesome idea, a great way to grow your email list. Um, and she had asked me if I had any recommendations for the best way to do that. Um, and I create everything through Photoshop. Um, now this is just, I was messing around with my new logo and making all different, um, yeah, so that, just disregard this. But if you are wanting to make a PDF document and you can make it look really beautiful via Photoshop, um, what I would do is recommend going up to File, um, oops, I'm on QuickTime, File, New, in Photoshop, um, and what you're going to select here is going to be eight and a half by 11 um, because a PDF freebie or a printable, um, I think the standard, you know, printing size is eight and a half by 11. Um, you can choose here your orientation. Do you want it to be um, landscape or portrait orientation? So you can choose that here. Um, let me see if I have an eight and a half by 11. I may. Yep, right here. Um, so eight and a half by 11. Um, so I'm going to choose that. Um, and then again, you can switch these um, depending on how you want it to print, how it would look best. Um, make sure that you um, are in RGB color mode. Um, if you start creating your PDF and you find that you can't add any colors, it's because your color uh, mode here was in grayscale. Um, so sometimes for whatever reason, it defaults to that. So just make sure that you're in RGB color. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. White should be your background color. Obviously, that's what most people are going to be printing in. Um, and so that's how I would set this up. I'm going to um, click create. So here is my um, eight and a half by 11. And I guess I was in landscape orientation, which is fine. It just depends on what your printable is going to look like. Um, now what I'm going to do is add a new layer um, and I'm going to hit T for text. And now I can add my text. Um, I love different fonts. Um, when you when you hit T for text, you're going to have all of your different fonts up here. Um, I have purchased fonts. I get a ton of free fonts. So whatever whatever font you love um, you know one of my favorites is playlist um, I'm using billabong as my um, you know for branding purposes um, but what you can do is and you can change up the font size up here the alignment if you've never worked um, uh, with text in Photoshop you can do a bunch of different things so you can have here you know the title of your PDF printable um, and the nice thing and I'm gonna tap on the layer the nice thing I'm gonna hit V for move um, and then the nice thing is that Photoshop has guides to help you center things so if I wanted this in the center I could do that right there I think I'll move that up a little bit um, so that would be kind of how I'd center it um, you can add images and text all sorts of different things here um, let's see, so I'll add another layer. Um, and usually when I'm creating something like this, I do use a lot of different layers. You'll find that with when working with text in Photoshop, you're not gonna just wanna start um, typing out lines and then hit enter and then type, type out more, you know, and it, that gets really, it gets just, it just doesn't look as good. You can certainly do that. I'm gonna tap the layer. Um, so I'm gonna hit V for move. I'm gonna move this guy over here. Um, I know it's got lots of spelling errors, but um, let's say I wanted to change the kerning. The kerning is gonna be the distance between the two lines. Now again, I recommend doing separate layers for pretty much every line of your text, unless it's like a big block of text. But let's say these are too close together or too far apart. I'm gonna double tap. Um, this, there we go, double tap the layer. Um, and then I'm gonna go over here to my character. Um, and you can see over here, you have so many different um, things that you can play with and mess with, so many different options. So just play with these. Um, but I use kerning a lot, which is this A on top of A. Um, right now it's on auto. Um, so what I can do is I can pull this down and get them a lot closer together. Um, or I could make them a lot farther apart like that so you can do that so i play with the kerning a lot um what else do i do when i make a pdf um 
Oh, because when you print it, you you don't want any of your text to be, um, I'm gonna hit V for move. You don't want your text too close to the edges or else they'll get cut off. So in order to see um, if that's going to happen for um, the people that are downloading this, all I do, honestly, I just go to file, I go to print, and it's gonna show me. See that, that border? You wanna make sure that all of your contents are within that border, um, so that's fine. Um, so I'll just move these guys in a little bit. Um, all right, you can add images to this as well. However, and I'll show you this in a moment, when you save your PDF, in order for it to not be a gigantic file size, you're gonna need to use um, a lower quality. Like this is not, you're not printing photos here. You know what I'm saying? So even if you add an image, um, you don't have to use maximum high quality or else your, your PDF is just gonna be too large. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanna, and to add images, you just place. Um, so you can go to file place. I created a custom shortcut because I use placement so often that my, um, my shortcut is command P. Um, but if you don't have a shortcut, you can go to file and you can go to place embedded or linked. These are like the same thing. I don't even know the difference between them. Um, so either one, I guess I pick place embedded um, and then you can add images. Um, what else? I mean, I think that's pretty much it. Um, one thing to bear in mind is that Photoshop does not have spell checker. Um, so what you might want to do is type out your text. If it's a block of text, type it out um, in a program like Google Docs, for example. That way you can get it spell checked and checked for grammar errors and that type of thing. Um, so as you can see, I have this is riddled with with spelling errors, so many spelling errors. But look, it's not underlined in red. So I wouldn't know unless I really proofread it. Um, I wouldn't know that I had missed, you know, misspelled these. Um, so I would recommend just copy and pasting from an already proofread document like Google Docs. Um, so let me show you how I would save this. Um, so if I'm ready to go, if I want this printed, I'm gonna go ahead and go up to File Save, or you can do Shift Command S, um, whatever, however you want to roll. Um, and then I'll give it its name, decide where it's going. Um, and then here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to this file format here. It says Photoshop. I'm going to go down to Photoshop PDF. That's going to create a PDF file. I want to uncheck layers. Uncheck the layers. If you have layers checked, your recipient is going to receive all of these layers over here on the right side. Um, and then they can edit them or do whatever. I mean, if you want to allow them to do that, if, if let's say you're giving away... Um, a calendar where you've created a calendar and then you want them to be able to edit uh, fields within the PDF, you could certainly um, include the layers. For most of what you're gonna be doing, I can't imagine there would be a need for that. Um, it is gonna make the document a lot bigger of a file size and you may have trouble with that like on your website or that type of thing, um, or even just, just portability for people to download and that type of thing. So go ahead and uncheck layers um, and then that way what your customer is going to receive and what you'll have as a final product is this flattened. Um, it'll be a flattened images, uh, a flattened PDF at rather. Um, and that's pretty much it. So I'll save it. Um, it'll pop up in my desktop as a PDF. I have a ton of these. Let me just see if I can find um, one to show you. It's super simple. These are really easy to upload to your website. Um, if you're using an email service provider like um, uh, MailChimp, I don't care for. You can certainly do it through MailChimp. If you're offering a freebie, you might want to use um, a mail service provider such as ConvertKit. That's what I use. Um, let me just find see one that I've created unless I've deleted them because I try to I must have deleted them because I do try to clean up stuff so here's a PDF file I don't even know oh this is one that I create I, I I stole this from the web and then I kind of created it um, anyway but this is actually one that I created in Photoshop see it's an Adobe PDF document um, the pieces what happened is I 
had done screenshots and the way this was on the website, um, it was all in pieces. And so I had to place all of these screenshots in Photoshop to stitch them together so that it was one printable document. Um, you know, so that's what it looks like. Um, so if you ever, in, <laughs> if you ever, this is just, I'm just weird like that. Um, but yeah, I do these all the time. Um, I guess I don't have my, uh, I guess I don't have, yeah, I must have cleaned this up recently. Um, but that's just it. That's it. And then it's a PDF file um, and super simple. Um, you can upload it and link to it on your website. If you want to know how to do that, I can show you. But that is how I would go about creating a PDF file. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know.